Hi, I'm Dennis DiCicco, Senior Editor of Sky and Telescope Magazine here in Suffern, New York at the 2012 Northeast Astronomy Forum, NEAF. And right now I'm speaking with Ron Bissinger of ESPIG. He's the CEO of ESPIG. And a year ago I spoke with Ron, he had just acquired the company as the new head of the company. And one of the big questions I had for him was, are you going to continue to support the amateur community the way you've been doing for the last two decades? And you said yes. And I think by what you're introducing here today, the proof is in the products. And that's exactly right, Dennis. Thank you very much. It's been a very busy year for us. We've spent a lot of time and effort developing products that are exclusively for amateur astronomy and uh, the uh, great user base that we already have. Uh, I'm very pleased to say that uh, the proof now is in the products and we have a lot of new stuff that we're going to be introducing as we speak. All right, you want to show it to me? You know, Dennis, I'd love to, except I think this is a great time to introduce one of the brains behind all these great new products. So I'd like to introduce everybody to Matt Thomas. He is our Director of Engineering. Okay, let's go meet Matt. Dennis, nice to meet you. Hey, my pleasure, Matt. Same here. So Ron tells me you're going to tell me about everything you've got here. You're going to give me the lowdown on all the new equipment. Yes, indeed. All right, so we've got a lot. Start? We, we've been a lot done a lot of things since last year when you last saw us. We uh, last year we introduced our STI camera, which is here. This was it, a little guider. This was our little guider, and it, we really had great expectations for it because we had lots of things in mind for what we could do with the STI. And one of the great things that we talked about amongst ourselves last year at NEF was the idea of an off-axis guider using our STI. We launched this idea at NEF last year, and six months later, in December, we announced our OAG for our 8300 base cameras using our STI, right. allowing people to guide our STI cameras, or excuse me, our STF cameras. All right, so this is your 8300 camera on the back that you had before. Correct. And the filter wheel that went with it. Correct. But now you've got a guider that's been added to the front of it. So exactly you, right. So you can do off-axis guiding. And by the looks of it, this guider is ahead of the filter wheel? That's absolutely true. And now you don't have to worry about guiding through narrowband filters. But you can still do off-axis guiding on the back of a long focal length telescope. That's great. That means you don't have any dimming of the light of the guide star because it's ahead of the filter. Exactly right. There's another neat thing that we did with this OAG that nobody else has done. We have added a focal reducing lens in the path for the OAG, which essentially doubles the field of view that the guide camera can see, which will in extremely increase the number of stars that you have available for your guide camera. That's interesting. So with the focal reducer, in the original cameras, the guiding chip was down at the same level as the imaging chip. Exactly. So it meant that if you were working with an F10 system or something like that, that's what the guider was seeing. But now up here where you've got it, you've got a focal reducer, faster image with a wider field of view, more guide stars. How faint a guide star will this work with? It depends a lot on which telescope you have. But in our tests, we've been able to guide on very, very faint stars with this system. So you mentioned the F camera, the 8300 F camera. So you've got a new version of the 8300 now? That's right, Dennis. We've upgraded all the electronics in our original 8300 camera and sped up our sampling considerably. We're now able to download an entire 8 megapixel image in under one second. Which is get that displayed on the computer. And get that displayed on the computer correctly. Uh, this is a great advantage, especially when trying to do focusing or doing high-speed imaging. And that's unprecedented in the industry. All right, so just to kind of reiterate here, you've got the new version, but does the old camera and the new camera, do they both work with the same filter wheel? Yes, mechanically speaking, they are the same. We have added our desiccant plug to the outside of the 8300 package, allowing users now to bake the desiccant much easier compared to our previous 8300 camera. All right, so this is the idea. This is, keeps the moisture out of the CCD chamber, but it makes it easy if you need to take it off, heat it up, and dry it out, and put it back on. In other words, recharge the desiccant? Exactly correct. All right. Now, I can see. Now, all right, so you've got two versions of the 8300, but you've got yet another version in an entirely different body here. You want to tell me a little about that? Yes, I sure do, Dennis. All right. This is our latest camera. We just announced it here at this show. This is our STT camera. Brand new. Brand new. And this has even more. For starters, we've taken a lot of what we did in our top of the line STX and shrunk them down into this small package. We have both our USB and Ethernet interfaces inside the camera. All right, so you can connect, you can connect to your computer through a standard USB cable. 
You can also connect the camera to an Ethernet network. Exactly right. So that means if you've got the camera here and on the other end of the network, you can put your computer so you can control the camera that way. Yes. All right. And you can control it from halfway across the world using almost any internet enabled device. Our cameras have what's called a built in web server, which means they have a web page, just like you might see when browsing the internet, that you can access via any web enabled device like your phone or your iPad or your computer. So the camera is sitting out on the internet and it looks like a web page. Exactly. And that means whatever I've got that I browse the web with, I can access the camera and it looks like a web page. And what can I do at that point? You can set cooling, change filters, start an exposure, and download your final image all across the world. So that means that the computer or the smartphone or whatever it is that I'm using to browse the web doesn't have to have any SBIG software on it. Nothing. Just a web browser. That's exactly right. And I can control the camera because I see the camera as a web page and I say, do this, do this, do this. That's exactly correct. Dennis. That's pretty good. Yeah. So you can do that if the camera's in your backyard or if it's in Australia and you're in New York. Exactly correct. All you right. have a web server inside your camera and that's what, that's what happens there. That's very, is that unique? Uh, very unique. I know, know of no other astron astronomical camera that has these features. All right, so you don't even have to have a computer where the camera is and control it remotely. Correct. Excellent. What other features are there? So we've enhanced the cooling in this camera compared to our previous models. We now get upwards of 55 degrees Celsius below ambient cooling with just air. Just air. Just the fans. Just the fans blowing on the thing. And what have you got here? We also have available water cooling if you want to use it. This is standard with the camera. No other additional accessories are at, required to add to the camera to allow you to water cool. We have a new feature newly introduced with this camera where we have the ability with some software on the computer to be able to automatically detect when there's frost on the CCD so that you know it's time to replace or recharge your desiccant. So in other words, if you get when you're cooling it, you get a little frost to form in a CCD, it's time to redo it. Yes, and this is our new desiccant plug. So We've it's got a external. Very, external desiccant plug, very low profile, but user serviceable. So I can see, just by looking at this, that the CCD is very far forward in the camera, which is nice. That means it's a very limited back focus for people that want to use focal reducers and stuff. Um, I can see that there's a shutter in here, so the mechanical shutter is in there. What about filters for this camera? So we do have a separate filter wheel that has some very neat features to it. Let's see. This is our filter wheel for the STT. Now you might notice, if you can see, there's notches on the outside edges of this filter wheel. These notches provide a locking mechanism, providing extremely high precision repeatability for the filter wheel as it turns. We have found through measurements that we are able to repeat the position of the filter after spinning it around and around to better than one pixel on the 8300 CCD. All right, and where that becomes important, and I know this from imaging, is if you have a little dust on your filter, it leaves a little artifact on your CCD, but if you're spinning the filters and that dust doesn't come back where it belongs, it becomes very hard to process the images because you get these separate images where the little dust artifact doesn't line up. So this is such high precision that it returns essentially any dust on your filters to exactly where it was. That's correct, Dennis. All right. How many filters can you fit in here? We have eight filters of eight. 36 millimeters in size. And that's we sufficient also, for the 8300 that's, chip. That's perfect for the 8300. We also have provisions to allow for standard inch and a quarter filters to, to go into the 36 millimeter cell. If somebody has, you know, this camera can be purchased with smaller chips and you could use smaller filters Correct. accordingly. Correct. Right. Or if you're doing photometry, there are a lot of filters that still only exist in inch and a quarter size. All right. Now, I can see something else going on here quite obviously. Off-axis guiding? Correct, Dennis. We actually have an entire guider assembly, all the electronics, built into the front cover of this filter wheel. So now you can guide in front of the filters in all cases with our new STT camera. All right, so the, the CCD, the guiding CCD, is built into this filter wheel. Correct. All right, how thick is the whole unit? We don't have exact numbers yet. Okay, but this. I mean, you can see by looking that it's a, a, little over a, you know, a little over an inch thick. Because we've integrated all the components here together in the filter wheel, this is going to be a thinner solution than having separate components bolted together. All right, so are there other features of here you want to tell me about? Absolutely. Just like with our OAG, we have a built-in focal reducer here which again provides you a wider field of view than you would have otherwise gotten. Both the mirror, which you can see here, is able to move 
so that you can position it relative to your telescope's performance, and you can also focus the CCD without wow. having to open up or change anything. We've got external controls to focus. All right, I can, I can see where that would be interesting because if you have a very fast focal ratio where you've got a large cone coming in, you want to move this out to the edge, but if you have a slower system, you can move it further in. Correct. It, all right, in other words, be able to pick up an optimum guide star without shadowing the chip. Exactly right. Also, some of the slower focal ratio systems tend to have smaller image circles. So you absolutely have to bring in that mirror closer so that you can illuminate it properly. All right, and you have the precision ability to adjust the focus and get the guide camera exact same focus as the as the main chip. Correct. Even compensate for off-axis images if they need to be focused a little differently. Absolutely correct. That's excellent. Oh, okay. Want to move down the line? Absolutely, Dennis. We've taken our very popular 11,000 CCD and integrated it into our STX camera line. So the 11,000 chip, this is the full frame 35 millimeter size CCD chip. Correct. And SBIG was the first company to introduce this chip in an astronomical camera for the amateur market. Yes, Dennis, but now times have changed. We have taken now some of the advanced features that we have on our STX16803 CCD camera, and we've now integrated our 11,000 in this body. We have both the USB and Ethernet interface with the built-in web server. Plus, we have extreme cooling now available on the 11,000. We're able to get below 65 degrees below ambient. 65 degrees with just air cooling? With just air alone. All right. However, there was a lot of people that gave us comments on our 16803 that we listened to. So everything from the front of the CCD forward, we've re-engineered to reduce the back focus with the 11,000 CCD. All right, I can actually see that the chip is quite far forward in the body of the camera here. Exactly. So we've changed the shutter mechanism to provide a even illumination rotating shutter. Plus, we've reduced the height of the front cover, and we've brought in the CCD a little closer forward so that we can get the optimal back focus. Ultimately, so that we can image with a Canon EOS lens using the 11,000 CCD. Oh, so that means you can actually use the 11,000 chip with Canon camera lenses. That's correct, Dennis. What about filters? With the filters. Really? Absolutely. We actually have here our first prototype of an eight position, 50 millimeter round filter wheel with the Canon EOS lens adapter on. So this goes right on the front there. This will go on the front of the STXL 11,000 and you can bolt your camera lens here to the front. Sufficient back focus through the filters, still achieve focus with camera lenses. Absolutely. That's a big deal. It is a big deal, and it's something that people really ask for on our STL 11,000. All right, now there's something down here that looks very unusual. You Absolutely. want to tell me about this? Absolutely, Dennis, I'd love to. For a long time, we've been talking about a solution that we call differential guiding. And what is differential guiding? It is a way to use the advantages of a guide scope where you've got lots of guide stars to choose from. A separate guide scope. Separate guide scope, but still be able to solve the problem of differential flexure in a long focal length imaging system. This has been a problem that has existed since the beginning of astrophotography. You've got the telescope that you're using to take your images. You've got a guide scope mounted on the top of it that you're using, whether it be a an old manual guided eyepiece or auto guiders, but as you move across the sky, the two telescopes point minutely in different directions, sometimes more than minutely. And of course, if you guide with one, then the other one gets a streaked image. So this eliminates that problem with a separate guide scope? Absolutely, this completely eliminates differential flexure. All right, you've got to show me how this is working. So what we've got, Dennis, is back here at the focal plane of the main telescope, we have an artificial star generator. It is essentially, we've got an infrared LED shining through a pinhole, generating what looks like a star. That light goes into the optical path and hits a small mirror, like what you would see in an off-axis guider. But rather than sending the light towards the camera, it sends the light back out the front of the telescope. So this is a little artificial star that's now being beamed out of the front of the telescope using the telescope optics. Exactly. So it will see all the same optical path that any light that you're looking at from your stars would see, but in reverse. Okay, and where's it going from there once it goes out the front of the so telescope? Once it goes to the front of the telescope, it hits what we call our retro reflector, which turns the light from that artificial star up and then into our guide scope and then back towards our guide camera. All right, so this is a typical off-axis guider. Would guide, you would, guide scope. Guide scope, guide scope, where you'd have your guide camera down here. 
And now you're beaming, in addition to this seeing stars in the sky, you're beaming this artificial star into the system as well. Exactly. And we've, got, we've actually got an STI camera in the back of this guide scope, and it will see both our artificial star and a real star. And by tracking both stars, not relative to a position on the CCD, but relative to each other, we are able to completely remove any differential deflection. So in other words, by looking at the two stars, how their relative separation and their position angle are to each other, you're maintaining perfect guiding, even if the guide scope is moving around relative to the main telescope. That's exactly right. We don't even need the guide scope to be rigidly mounted to the imaging scope in order for this to work. In fact, in one of our beta tests, we were using simple hose clamps to hold the guide scope onto the imaging scope. And you can essentially use this with any size telescope. You've got it set up here with a typical schmidt cassegrain an 8-inch schmidt cassegrain but it sounds like the system would work if you wanted to put it on a 24 or 36-inch telescope. Absolutely, the same principle applies. And if you've got adjustments that you've made, it looks to me like this thing can slide in and out if you have a different spacing between the guide scope and the main optical beam. Correct. We have adjustments of being able to position the telescope as far forward as we need to on the bar. But what's really ultimately all that matters is that we've got the, the guide scope on top, and we've got the retroreflector in the optical path, and we finally have an adjustment back here for the artificial star to properly align it to the, the retroreflector. So it's pretty easy to set up. It's very easy, yes. All right, and one of the questions that I would have, since you're actually introducing light into the optical system, you said it's infrared, so you don't have any problem with any of that light flooding back in and bothering the imaging? No, not at all. It's very directed light uh, until it reaches infinity focus, which is about what it is when it hits the retroreflector. Back by the imaging camera, it's very well focused, and it's well focused out of the, cam out of the telescope. Not a problem at all. That's a very interesting system, and once again, very unique. Absolutely unique, and it is something that we are using to try to help amateur astronomers. With any, virtually any size telescope. Exactly. I suppose a question would be, do they have to use your guide scope, or can they have their own guide scope already and just adapt this little piece to the front of it? What we'd like to do is try to provide a solution for our users. So we want to try to make it as easy as for them to use. And, and that means we're trying to set up a solution that they just have to bolt onto their telescope. Does it mean they have to do that? No, but what we actually offer will probably be a solution it's very simple to use. A package. All right, very good. Matt, I want to thank you for telling me about all these new and innovative products. You really do prove what Ron said. The proof is in the products. You are out there to support the amateur community as you've been doing for 20 years. That's great. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Dennis, for this opportunity. I'm Dennis DiCicco for Sky and Telescope here in Suffern, New York at the 2012 NEEF Conference.